Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Drain. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by addressing the Red Ukraine to the rest of the world. Two years ago, in 2014, Mariupol, one of the 10 largest Ukrainian cities, was thrown into a turmoil of public unrest and local warfare between Ukrainian National Guards and the unknown with machine guns wearing ski masks. From May till July, the city was under the so-called Donetsk People's Republic, but then it was freed by the Ukrainian army. Our guest today is Maxim Yali, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of World History of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. He's also a consultant to a member of the Ukrainian Parliament since 2015 and a member of the Continental European, European Union Club. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very welcome, much for welcome. stopping by again. It's a pleasure to have you here. Me too. Uh, now, uh, usually uh, May 9th, uh, it becomes pretty much a, you know, a first and second anniversary of the events that took place in Mariupol back in 2014. Uh, how, how, let's, let's go back and could you please just describe what did happen back then in Mariupol? Well, as you know, uh, two years ago, uh, it was actually already for, for about a, mo a month some unrests uh, by DNR supporters. Uh, they captured uh, city council and it was set free only on the 7th of May 2014, just a few days before the 9th of May. And as you know, uh, people usually celebrate, uh, uh, memorate uh, uh, the victory uh, in the Second World War mm -hmm. uh, on the 9th of May. And again, uh, there was a peaceful demonstration organized by Communist Party yeah. of Ukraine uh, and uh, during this demonstration it was uh, obvious that uh, the most of uh, policemen uh, were there for security measures and uh, a group of uh, pro-Russian terrorists mm -hmm. uh, tried to capture uh, city police department with machine guns, yes. they shot, uh, they occupied uh, two uh, stories and uh, two floors and uh, they shot some policemen who were there but there were only a few of them and at the same time there was a meeting held by the head of the uh, uh, city po uh, police uh, department uh, together with uh, uh, representatives and heads of uh, volunteer battalions. Azov and uh, Dnipro, mm -hmm. and that's why actually it helped a lot because uh, when uh, they heard shooting, um, they called, they get got in touch uh, with that battalions and asked for help because there were only a few of them and uh, much less than those uh, who tried to capture. And uh, besides, uh, some of the policemen betrayed. It, it was all became obvious later because they knew that there were only a few uh, policemen mm -hmm. uh, inside uh, the building. And when uh, the representatives, just soldiers of National Guard and Dnipro and uh, Azov battalions came to help, there were already uh, a lot of people murdered, mm -hmm. even some passerbys, uh, peaceful and uh, still they managed uh, to cope with them, but at the same time uh, a crowd came up yeah. uh, from uh, pro-Russian activists. Uh, there were a lot of uh, provoc provocators yeah. uh, inside and um, they helped even uh, to avoid uh, to escape uh, those, the last uh, terrorists who tried to capture uh, while uh, they were already captured by the uh, representative mm -hmm. of, of police and uh, uh, National Guard. Moreover, uh, some when already these uh, just crowds started crying just uh, Nazi, get out, because uh, 
there were uh, rumors spread around the city that uh, right sector, famous, mm -hmm. well known uh, for that time, came uh, to the city okay. to kill people. I want to remember that uh, this event took place just a week after. Yes, uh, and, and, and I want to ask you a question about that. Well, after. Yeah, uh, and when they tried, uh, they when they retreated, few streets uh, in direction to the center uh, of the city. Again, they uh, just tried uh, to surrender them, and uh, as we can see from uh, some videos already, which are in the in internet, there were some. Uh, again, terrorists uh, who started shooting from guns to soldiers of National Guard, trying to provocate them to shoot them back. Yeah. And uh, moreover, uh, there was a sniper who killed uh, a, not a passerby, there was just a man assisting uh, a correspondent from Russia today, I would uh -huh. like to mention. Yeah, okay. uh, he was wounded, he was trying to assist him, and he was shot down to the head. The point is that when later analyzed, of course, people, the crowd, they saw uh, just uh, some uh, soldiers uh, with machine guns who were also scared by the crowd. And uh, they saw a man that f fell down. Yeah. They thought, of course, that it was done by the soldier. Yeah. But yeah. the point is that he was shown. Uh, to the back of the head. Yeah. So it was impossible. Just and yes, yes, and I want you to ask a question. You talked about Odessa, the event of Odessa, the tragedy of Odessa. Yeah. Now in Odessa, you know, this is uh, very difficult to know for some of uh, citizens of Odessa what's really happened. And now, you know, in Odessa, uh, some of my friends say to me that this is uh, very um, difficult uh, in Odessa because a large part of the citizens are pro-Russian. And um, what, what is your analyze about Odessa tragedy and what is the link for you between Odessa tragedy and what's happened in, 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 in uh, Mariupol? Well, let's recap uh, what did happen in uh, Odessa for yeah. the viewers. Yeah. Recap it. The just uh, yeah. some pro-Russian, I can recap it just yeah. uh, for our visitors uh, that uh, on the 2nd of May 2014, yeah. uh, uh, there were again uh, two demonstrations, uh, two demonstrations, one pro-Russian, one pro-Ukrainian. Yes. And there were clashes mm -hmm. because uh, some pro-Russian, I would say terrorists, because they killed even some of them, they had uh, guns. Uh, weapons. They shot some uh, football fans yes. who also had uh, some weapons because they were uh, well prepared. They knew that could be some provocations. And uh, uh, the members of uh, pro-Ukrainian, uh, some pro-Ukrainian activists, uh, firstly they just uh, uh, kicked back, I would say, uh, uh, and then they, uh, of course, when they started clashes, when they saw that uh, some of them were killed, uh, I it's very important because uh, first victims w were from the side of pro-Ukrainian activists. Yes, yes. And uh, when they uh, again started these clashes, police didn't do anything. There is a great, uh, I would say, uh, their, mm, it's their fault, I would say, because yes. they couldn't react appropriately and uh, when these clashes uh, started because there were hundreds of people uh, they came to the uh, building of uh, just professional trade union, union trade, trade union unions building, right yes. and there was just used some bottles molotov well, cocktails well here here's yeah. the thing uh, as far as the facts uh, that day there was a, a football match yeah so and as a tradition, during the uh, war times, all the football fans and ultras, they uh, made a peace uh, uh, treat, uh, treaty between all mm -hmm. of them so they would not fight. And so before each football match, they joined together for a demonstration. So the police held, uh, the police uh, intended for the demonstration to you know, go through the down, downtown, the main uh, main streets, but the uh, the separatists, the pro-Russian mm. 
meeting started to gather, gather and so they attacked the uh, Ukrainian fans. And after having uh, seen uh, uh, several people killed by the pro-Russian, then the crowd became very furious and they attacked the, pro trade, uh, yeah. the trade union building. And as a result of all the chaos and uh, uh, battle and the, the, the fire trucks came only like 40 minutes after uh, the, the fire took place. And so about 40, 49 people, 49 unfortunately, people unfortunately, they were unfortunately. Can, can we think about a global strategy did by the Kremlin in Odessa and in Mariupol? Uh, do you think about a global strategy? Of course, it was a strategy because, as I told you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, these tragic events took but place. I, 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 wa I want to say a global strategy because yeah. you know, global strategy you know, a lot of analysts in mm -hmm. in France. Uh, when when I, I talked uh, with some of my friends in France, they say, okay, Olivier, uh, we know what's happened in Maidan, but we, some of them say to me, frankly, we are sure that Kharkov, Odessa, and all the east of Ukraine will be under the Russian uh, influence. And they say to me that they, they, they were sure that Kharkov and Odessa will, 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 uh, will leave uh, definitely the Ukraine. And I say no to them. I said no, never. And for me, really, uh, when I saw the Odessa uh, tragedy and uh, Mariupol and what's happened also in Kharkov, mm -hmm. uh, that's for me a global strategy, really very well known global, very well uh, organized uh, yeah. strategy. Yeah, so the point is that, uh, as I can just uh, quotate uh, Russian President Putin, mm -hmm. in that times he uh, declared that uh, these eight uh, oblasts, yeah, regions of Ukraine belong to so-called Novorossiya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Novorossiya pro project that time, <laughs> because uh, they knew from the strate strategical point of view that Crimea without these uh, regions is nothing because it's a, a peninsula and if there is no uh, just connection through the la mainland yes it's very uh, difficult almost impossible to supply with all necessary goods uh, and stuff so the point is was even just if to analyze strat strategies of uh, Novorossiya ideologies such as Dugin you know mm -hmm. uh, the most famous so-called uh, geopolitical uh, geopolitics expert, he said that uh, the plan was just to unite uh, Transnistria region, yeah, mm -hmm. also just a black hole, so to say, where uh, Russian troops uh, located with uh, the mainland of Russia. And therefore, uh, as you know, Odessa has a border with Transnistria, and it was very easy uh, to capture it if they were, uh, as due to the plans, yeah, unrests. Mm -hmm. serious ones. And uh, Mariupol is uh, on the way to the Crimea. So the point is to join uh, Russia, continental Russia, with uh, Crimea. It was necessary to get this uh, land corridor through the Mariupol. And uh, moreover, uh, how these, as you asked, answering your question, these events to connect it, uh, it's very important uh, to notice that on the 11th of May in Mariupol, mm -hmm was planned so-called referendum for yes. DNR. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, just uh, it was needed to get some unrest mm -hmm. to, uh, with the help, of course, Russian propaganda to show it on TV, this unrest, and uh, just uh, to spread rumors that right sector, because people really were afraid because of that rumors, uh, that uh, they will come and start killing people as it uh, as you can analyze just uh, what was shown uh, just uh, concerning events in Odessa, yeah? So that, that they were representatives exactly of right sector. For people to come to vote for DNR, and actually this uh, uh, main goal was achieved because on the 11th of May people were scared because rumors were spread. Yes. And because uh, these representatives of Azov and uh, Dnipro uh, were dressed in a black uniform mm -hmm. without insignia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, of course, uh, these provocators said that these are the representatives of right sector. Mm -hmm. And the technology, actually, how the, the city police department was tried uh, to capture it, 
to be captured was exactly the same as in Donetsk and uh, in other yes, uh, cities same. of Donetsk Oblast, because everywhere it was started with the main just uh, uh, police department, uh, special but service department, they were captured. The and city administration, the city administration, and the it's same. done by the people. Remember, remember, Maxim. Uh, we we discussed uh, during Maidan. We discussed together, yeah. and uh, and uh, for me, I, I I received some phone call from French analysts, and they say, you know that we are sure that Putin will go to Kiev, and he will stop in the, in the Nyep River only and uh, it will take a uh, large part of Ukraine and I received phone call like that and we discussed about this plan yeah, of, yeah, of Russia you remember and and Putin Putin lost and that's amazing because it's because of the Ukrainian people they refused this and that's yeah. really 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 a miracle yeah a miracle <laughs> well, let, let me let me uh, go uh, just a little bit back uh, at the same time, the Russia Today and the other uh, propaganda Russian media, mm -hmm. uh, the events that took place in Mariupol, uh, and here's how it, how it happened. The meeting was taking place on one side, the 30 armed, unknown mask, uh, you know, wearing ski masks people with the machine guns attacked the police department at the same time. And so, and, and only when the police couldn't hold it anymore, they called for help of the National Guard. And at the same time, the provocate, prov provocators uh, dis uh, dispersed the news that the, those policemen that uh, did not want to serve Kyiv were being killed. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. In the police department, so the people got furious, and they wanted to uh, go and uh, you know free those supposedly exactly the policemen. Yes, and so and and so when the when the the national guards with some battle vehicles came, and there was really I mean a, a full blown war with some you know uh, hand grenades and you know all uh, and the uh, mortars and you know and um, and then I saw the report from the Russia Today. Uh, to, uh, and they used, uh, you know, uh, a little, cl little uh, piece of video from here and from here, and they used terms that the National Guards attacked civilians, yeah. started shooting civilians, started burning the police that didn't want to serve, uh, mm. you know, Ky uh, Kyiv. And so it is a complete twist from the truth. And the same thing with uh, Odessa. Yeah. And e even until now, two years from now, a lot of people still. Yeah, but if you see a Sputnik uh, TV or Sputnik newspaper online, you, you, this is uh, this is obvious that that's the day they did. Now it's already, you know, obvious. Uh, the strongest emotion of human being yeah. is uh, scare. Mm -hmm. That's why it was done to use this emotion for people to be frightened and uh, to go to that so-called referendum. And uh, how they use the uh, unique technology, I would say. Uh, there are about uh, 500 uh, people living in Mariupol. So uh, usually on elections, there are about 200 uh, um, election stations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they opened only so-called four of them. And of course, uh, people who wanted to vote, and there were some, of course, we can't, uh, ad we, we must admit it, supporters, uh, those who just were influenced by Russian propaganda, they came there, and of course they were accused, because just for polling elections, uh, election station, yeah, for 500,000 people city, and of course it was used uh, by uh, medias to show how many supporters of so-called DNR, yeah, there are in Mariupol. And of course, uh, but anyway, just uh, it was uh, the, mo the most important that they failed to capture the police department. Uh, if if yeah. they did it, as they managed to do uh, in uh, other towns, small towns and cities like Donetsk, it would be much more difficult than uh, to win it back. It would be much more serious uh, consequences for Ukraine. But Mari Mariupol was still, uh, for a couple of months, was uh, not loyal to uh, Kyiv, right? Uh, 
I can't say it wasn't loyal because you see it's another questions concerning uh, just the heads of uh, special service and uh, police mm -hmm. department uh, I can't say because he was pro-Ukrainian and okay. uh, exactly on the 9th of May he was captured finally uh, by so-called terror by terrorist uh, and uh, he was released later already uh, but uh, the same concerns uh, the city mayor who was holding uh, just conducted negotiations with the representative of the mm -hmm. and they were just opened uh, the so-called uh, department uh, yeah it, it still uh, was working and there were some uh, people um, with machine guns uh, capturing again they tried because as I t mentioned before two days ago, uh, before it was released, before that events yes. from uh, supporters of Denair. But then again, uh, when it happened, they started capturing again, and yes. they did it. And yeah. when you said in your interview that for you, the, when the ambassador of US say in Mariupol that another Russia project stopped in Mariupol, uh, what is your analysis about that? Because of this uh, people resistance? Yes, exactly, because they, uh, people managed uh, uh, to not to allow them to occupy it uh, mm -hmm. completely. Because, you know, Mariupol also is very important from strategical point of view, not just uh, through the mainland corridor to Crimea, but as well the, uh, there is one of the biggest uh, ports of mm -hmm. Ukraine. So, if uh, from the point of view of geopolitics, yeah, uh, to get uh, to capture Odessa, and uh, Mariupol, if they did it, if they managed to do it, uh, they would cut down Ukraine from both Sea of Azov and Black Sea. Mm -hmm. yes. So, and it was uh, the strategy because, yes. as you know, Putin explained uh, uh, the occupation, yeah, annexation of Crimea by the threat of NATO mm -hmm. alliance. Yes. Yeah. So, therefore, in uh, Odessa. Uh, there could be, and there, there is, you know, the rest of the fleet, Ukrainian fleet, uh, uh, were taken there after mm. Crimea was annexed. Uh, annexed uh, yeah. They give back this fleet? No. 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 Yeah. Just, it's another, okay. I would say, yeah. But uh, do you think there, there could be even economical reasons uh, for Mariupol to, uh, for them to try to take back? Because, like, as we see here, first of all, it's half of a million people. Uh, the statistics for the January 1st, 2015, uh, that live in Mariupol mm -hmm. and the uh, suburbs. Su suburbs, yes. Uh, there are 56 in industrial enterprises in Mariupol uh, under various plans of o uh, ownership. The city's industry is diverse with heavy industry dominant. Mariupol is home to major steel mills, including some of the global importance and chemical plants. There are also important seaport and railroad junction. The largest enterprises are uh, Illich Iron and Steel work, uh, Works, Azovstal, Azovmash Holdings, and so forth and so on. This is 37.5% of the total production for the Netsk Oblast. Exactly. Which is like uh, over a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Revenue. yeah, of course, from this point of view, it's a, it's a center of And we, and of we know some of, those, uh, some of those plans used to have some contracts for Russian uh, space program. Mm -hmm. Well, military program yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there was another try uh, to capture Marupo. January 24, 2015. Well, it's another tragic event okay. when uh, Graz yeah, yes. were used and attacked, uh, yes. attacked. I mean, in August 24th, when there was uh, a second wave, I would say. Oh, okay. I was there that time. It was just a ni nightmare. Uh, just uh, there is a small town, Novazovsk, mm -hmm. close to the border to Russia. And on the Independence Day, the 24th of August, Russian tanks got there because my friends were there just the day before he came to visit his girlfriend and uh, he, could, he couldn't come back and they were obviously Russians absolutely and uh, can you imagine the situation because after uh, Mariupol was uh, set free uh, from pro-Russian separatists there were only just few hundreds of them actually mm -hmm. and it was pretty easy uh, I would say you, for Mariupol, Mariupol was very lucky, but uh, when tanks came, 
only even from all that tragical events, uh, there were only Azov volunteer battalion, few hundreds of people with yeah. machine guns uh, taking care of, uh, I mean, security. Nothing was done from this point of, uh, from the point of use of security. And of course, if tank attacked Mariupol, just they were, I, I, I repeat, just 30 kilometers from Mariupol. Yes. They were already there. It was the biggest threat. There was a panic inside the population. Sure. Uh, people started evacuation, just trying to escape because they knew if uh, but, but for me, but for me, you the know, point is, I want to finish. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when Baradai, that time, the first so-called prime minister uh -huh. of Denair, yes, were on TV show. You can find it in the internet as well. When he was asked, he was that time the first prime minister of uh, Denair. When he was asked in one of his interviews in Moscow, why didn't you get Mariupol that time in August? You had all the necessary things, yeah. weapons, etc. Yes. He said, you know why you mentioned these just uh, plants? Yeah, industrial, the biggest plants, actually. Yes. They belong to Renat Akhmetov. Okay. His version was that um, there was a deal between Denair and uh, Akhmetov, because the point is the uh, majority of his uh, enterprises, yeah, biggest, uh, allocated in Donetsk yes. and uh, uh, just uh, uncontrolled territories. Yes. And uh, they are export oriented. The point is that Odessa was already, I mean, port was closed for him. It was uh, uh, controlled by Kolomoisky, another yes. tycoon. And the only way for him to export his production was Mariupol seaport. So if mm. it was captured by the Nair, he would fail. Yeah. Nobody, he wouldn't be able to export his production. This is, I, I want to recall, the uh, just uh, the version of uh, so-called prime, prime minister at that time of Donetsk. Well, unfortunately, time is up. Oh. Yes, and uh, uh, the story still is in the making. And, uh, you know, every day we get different news. Uh, before we move on, I want to uh, draw your attention to Facebook. Uh, find us on the Facebook, facebook.com uh, slash uh, first UA channel and first facebook.com slash UAT time and uh, to f uh, finish what do you think about the Minsk agreements especially now they're talking about uh, the elections holding elections yeah yes. on uncontrolled territory what do you what is your take on that the point is that now Minsk process has come to a deadlock okay and, uh, you know, previously, due to these means agreements, uh, Ukraine promised uh, to uh, pass the amendments uh, to the Constitution uh, yes. yeah, concerning these uh, uncontrolled territories to, get, uh, to give it uh, special status. But now there is a new, new yeah. way. Now new... a new way they are demanding, I mean, Germany, France, Russia to hold elections. And uh, Bismertny, one of the participants, uh, yeah. resigned from that group. Resigned, exactly. What does it mean? Well, he understood that it's impossible to find a compromise, even uh, yes, due this, to the, the latest the, news. The Minsk agreement the, is impossible to implement. Yeah, the point is because it's impossible to hold elections yeah. on the territories uncontrolled, because uh, weapons well, and militaries... You uh, and I, we know that, but seems like it's somebody is forcing that. So it supposedly... It I don't think it's possible. Okay. It's Moreover, possible. you know, U.S. president elections are coming in November mm -hmm. and until that time I suppose we will not face any progress in this field. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. It's impossible to implant. It's right. impossible. Well, that's just uh, let's just hope it's not going to take place, but uh, some things tell me that it's not that easy. We'll see. Exactly. We'll see. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So let's hope uh, for the we'll, best. Yes, <laughs> let's, let's do. Okay. Uh, it was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Maxim Yali, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of World History of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. Olivier Drin and Sergei Vichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show to you the real Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.